Hey guys, Woodruff here. Um, now let's talk about hemorrhagic stroke treatment. Now, this is a lot more simple because um, in all honesty, there's not a lot we can do for hemorrhagic stroke, just I mean it depending on the cause, of course. Um, most of hemorrhagic stroke, what I'm trying to do is just prevent things from not getting worse. And um, this is a bleeding stroke. So most of the time what I'm doing is trying to prevent the bleeding from getting worse. So the things that we kind of do to help manage this is we want to, um, we are going to hold um, stop, stay away from any sort of anticoagulant or antiplatelet. These are going to be contraindicated for these patients um, or not safe. Um, and um, nothing that's going to make the patient bleed more or be more at risk for bleeding is going to be given. Um, one of the biggest things that we do for hemorrhagic stroke is controlling their blood pressure. The goal is usually to keep the systolic blood pressure less than 160. Um, again, I talked about this in other videos, but we want to keep their blood pressure high enough to uh, make sure that they are um, getting good flow to their brain, but we don't want their blood pressure too high, especially in a hemorrhagic because it can lead them to bleed. Now you probably would think like, oh, don't we want their blood pressure lower, like 120s? Absolutely not because they've lost a lot of blood. So we need more flow. Why is this lady always yelling at me? Um, so rude. Um, so my life is like always someone yelling at me. You can go now. Bye. 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 Um, anyway, yeah, if only. Anyway, so the thing is here is, is we do not want their um, blood pressure too low, but we also don't want it too high. So it's like a fine balance there. It's so usually we like their systolic blood pressure. Like I think I told you in another video, like 140 to 160 is usually where I've seen blood pressures kept. We usually like it more towards the 140 um, range, but every person um, has a different individualized goal. Um, so there's also, you know, we talked about there's different types of hemorrhagic strokes. There's a subarachnoid hemorrhages, and then there is um, intracerebral hemorrhages. Um, so for the subarachnoid, we talked about how that's usually caused by an aneurysm. <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> one thing to know about aneurysm is the blood vessels um, that... Um, are affected can be more prone to spasms. So we, um, one medicine that we give, and this is like a core measure medicine, like this is one of those medicines, like how, I don't know if you've ever noticed in the hospital, it'll be like, hey, you have to give antibiotics within 30 minutes of their due time. Um, this is another one that's like that. It has to be given within like 30 minutes to an hour of when it's due. It has, it's a timely medication as they call it. Um, and I, I always tell the story usually about, um, this lady that I had that had a hemorrhagic stroke and she was on this and, you know, my hospital was so in, is so anal retentive about, um, how they, um, keep up with, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, this medication. Cause it is considered like, uh, you know, a life and death measure. We will keep in order to be like a stroke facility, you have to keep up with certain, um, protocols. And so I was going in to give this lady and the lady's like, Oh, I'll take it later. And like, I was a brand, like not brand new, but I was newer. And I was like, no lady, you have to take this. Like, you know, like I was so scared. I was like, the, the lady outside said that like, please don't make me look bad. Please take this medicine. I'll, I'll pay you. <laughs> like I was pretty much ready to bribe her, like take this medicine. Um, but effectively, um, what it is, is for people with aneurysms, it's a medication that helps to, um, relax blood vessels. Yeah, there you go. Um, it relaxes blood vessels and, um, by relaxing the blood vessels, um, it, uh, decreases the risk of spasms. And so I have here, what kind of medicine is this? And you also get to join the best friend fan club. Um, I, which means I will be your fan. Um, and I want to be your best friend. If you know what kind of med this is, if you look at the last part of the name, it is a calcium channel blocker. So yes. And, um, some people right now are probably laughing, like what's wrong with this crazy lady? Why would anyone be in her fan club? Or why would I want her to be a fan of me? You probably don't want me to be a fan of you. Cause I can be pretty strange. Um, but if you're in the cardiac fan club, it's a great place to be. You're going to love it. Anyway, um, so nemotipine, if you remember, and dipenes, they are calcium channel blockers. Um, so if you remember, calcium channel blockers provide like peripheral vasodilation. So this is how they believe this helps, that it relaxes some of these blood vessels that could be spasming after an aneurysm. Um, there is some surgical therapy, but this would only be if they had like um, an aneurysm, if they had a 
um, AV malformation, which is an arterial venous malformation, which is like a congenital thing, or if they had an, um, an uh, like if it's really intense, um, like uh, blood bruise there, they may go in and evacuate it. Um, or if they had an aneurysm, they might clip or coil it. And this is what these pictures are like. Clipping an aneurysm looks like this, it almost looks like a, like a paper clip. And then coiling um, puts this wire in there. And pretty much both of these, they stop the bleeding, which is the goal at the end. Okay. I think that's it for hemorrhagic stroke treatment. I'll see you next talking about uh, finishing up acute stroke. We're about to transition into long-term management of stroke. See you for the next one.